Good afternoon, friends. Happy Sunday to all of you. I have exciting news to share with all of you today. Congress is finally making progress on the next stimulus package, and these checks may start to go out to millions of Americans on a monthly basis once it is signed. However, friends, several lawmakers have proposed that there be stricter qualification requirements. There are a lot of details to cover today. So please make sure that you watch until the end of this video for more information on these monthly stimulus checks. Friends, I will be giving away a $50 Walmart gift card every day this month of December. Please make sure that you enter the giveaways by clicking and liking several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. My friends, the more videos that you comment on, the greater your chances of winning these daily giveaways. Some of the legislation that's been passed recently, including the Inflation Reduction Act, has tried to encourage the adoption of electric vehicles. And in a, in a way, it, it hasn't fully addressed some of the underlying issues with supply chains. For instance, the tax credits for electric vehicles that were drafted in the IRA required critical mineral sourcing in North America. And and while we all agree with that, and we all want that ideally, even the manufacturers have indicated that that's just not going to be possible and it's going to be a problem. Even our ally, um, France, um, President Macron was here last week, indicated that to, to President Biden as well, that it's a problem. And, you know, and, and there was a witness that we had in, in a hearing in September that indicated that the, the EV tax credit in the IRA would have almost no impact on EV market uptake. So, it, you know, it just appears that the adoption, uh, the, or I should say the goal of, of trying to increase the adoption of EVs in the U.S. and onshore manufacturing is, is, is a good goal, but it's not being approached in, in the right way. And, and we may fail on both of those because of that. For instance, if I could use the example, the largest investment, the largest economic development project in the history of the state of Georgia was just announced earlier in, in August in my district, right, right after this legislation was passed. And that was Hyundai investing billions of dollars, over $5.5 billion in an EV factory in the, my district, in the first congressional district, that is now jeopardized by the fact that they were not included in, in the tax credits because of the fact that it'll be a couple of years before they are able to manufacture these cars in the United States. Millions of U.S. children were lifted out of poverty in 2021 thanks to a more generous child tax credit that included monthly checks that were sent out to millions of families. Now, the lame duck session of Congress offers a last chance this year to renew the expanded child tax credit that lapsed in December 2021. As the end of the year approaches, many Democrats on Capitol Hill have raised their voices in support of reinstating the more generous child tax credit. Senate Democrat Cory Booker said at an event urging that action on the child tax credit be taken as quickly as possible. He said, this is a moment where we must make a lasting commitment as a nation to saying that not one child growing up in the richest country on the planet should be growing up in poverty. A new report from the U.S. Joint Economic Committee, Democrats found that the child tax credit was a key policy that helped usher a record-breaking decline in poverty in 2021. The number of children living in poverty fell to historic lows as a full child tax credit was made available to an additional 19 million low-income children. This was largely driven by the enhanced credit's full refundability, which made all families eligible for the full credit, with the exception of the highest-income families. The child tax credit was increased in 2021 from $2,000 per child to $3,600 per child under the age of 6, and then up to $3,000 for children ages 6 through 17. Half of those sums were made available through monthly payments, and all eligible parents received the rest of the credit when they filed their tax returns the following year. For 2022, the child tax credit has reverted back to $2,000 per child under the age of 17. Now, Democrats are hoping to pass an enhanced version 
with a corporate tax extender that Congress is poised to consider. Certain Democratic leaders, such as Senate Democrat Sherrod Brown, have vowed to oppose any corporate tax breaks unless the child tax credit is also expanded. Brown said this week, These cuts have made such a difference in families' lives. They must continue. However, any deal for a newly expanded child tax credit may not provide for terms as generous as they were under the American Rescue Plan Act in 2021. Friends, the key word for this video is snowshoe. If you would like to enter today's Walmart gift card giveaway, please click and like several of my videos and then comment below this keyword, which is snowshoe and additional keywords of any video of mine that you watch. And do make sure, friends, that you're also subscribed to my channel. Rachel Snyderman, Senior Associate Director at the Bipartisan Policy Center, that while both parties are interested in revisiting the child tax credit, there may be a compromise around the income phase-ins and maintaining incentive for labor force participation. Lawmakers are also looking to index the credit to inflation in the short term. With only so many legislative days on the calendar left, it remains to be seen whether Congress will find time to address the issue before the end of this month. But there is certainly room to address it next year. Friends, the good news is that the child tax credit is going to remain high on the priority list for the next Congress. One key reason for that is the terms of the credit that is currently in effect. With $2,000 per child, which was implemented with the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, set to expire in 2025. Still, advocates are pushing for Congress not to wait and act on the child tax credit before year end. There are many U.S. states have created expanded child tax credit payments for their residents. However, the scope of these credits vary. For instance, the size ranges from a non-refundable $100 per child credit in Oklahoma to a fully refundable $1,000 per child credit in Vermont. If a credit is refundable, taxpayers receive a refund for the portion of the credit that exceeds their income tax bill. If a credit is fully refundable, taxpayers are eligible for the full amount of the credit, regardless of their income tax liability. Refundable credits can therefore help offset all taxes paid, not just income taxes, by helping mitigate some of the regressive effects of other state and local taxes. Despite variation, these state credits represent a meaningful first step in enhancing the economic security and general well-being of children across the United States. So friends, what are your thoughts on expanding the child tax credit? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Well, my marvelous and magnificent friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this Sunday afternoon. Thank you so much, friend, for everyone who is watching and who have joined me here today. The winner of yesterday's Walmart gift card giveaway is Lloyd Powell. Congratulations, my dear friend. To claim your gift card, please check your notifications page and send me a message. Or you can message me on my Facebook page. My friends, I'll be announcing a new winner in a video later today. So please make sure that you enter the giveaways. Thank you and have a wonderful and blessed day.